Well, hi there. <laughs> this is this old man. This is This Old Man. Uh, today is another episode of my uh, YouTube vlog, <laughs> video log, whatever. Um, and uh, today is kind of a special one for me because you caught me here at work, hard at work. Uh, this is my dining room and I have a little uh, studio space set up over here, uh, one of several in my apartment. And uh, what I'm doing today is getting ready to uh, uh, put together a package of my deceased domestic partner's cremated remains uh, because we're, as a family, we're planning a, a scattering of Daryl's ashes in San Francisco, uh, Coma, California. Uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend. And it's a family matter, so it, it's kind of private. But, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, questions about this whole cremation thing. And I thought I would just kind of explain a few things and kind of remove some of the mysteries of the whole process. Um, quite frankly, you know, I've never been a fan of, of uh, burials in cemeteries where you own a piece of... Uh, property for eternity. It's kind of what I call the white man's lie. That's a white man's lie going back in history, way back, way back to the Magna Carta, probably and beyond, where all of a sudden certain people, just by right of birth, are able to own pieces of Mother Earth. Not only do they own it, but all of their descendants own it, <laughs> as long as you can trace down the line of descendants. So, um, where that's concerning a uh, cemetery lot, I, re I really think cemeteries are a product of, first of all, the Victorian age, uh, where funerals were a big damn deal, and uh, the funeral industry itself, you know, I'm familiar with the funeral industry. I used to be the president of a little company that uh, uh, published memorials on the internet way back when, way back in... 1996, 1997, 98. I think we finally shut it down maybe in 2000 when I went back to uh, graduate school again. But at any rate, we had a little company called Cyberspace Memorial Service and we were offering to uh, uh, publish memorials uh, for people. It didn't have to be people who were necessarily cremated, but anybody who just happened to die. Well, <laughs> Back in those days, that was early in this whole internet thing and, and social messaging and all that. So um, we had a hard time selling that thing. Me and some friends spent uh, $10,000 to get a little, um, a little booth at the California Funeral Directors Convention at the Disneyland Hotel in, what, 1998, I believe it was. And... Um, we were quite the oddity, um, and, and really we got the feeling that funeral directors didn't really want to have much to do with this because they could see that, uh, well, you know, if this is the future of the funeral industry, uh, this could very well put us out of business. And that would, uh, that would uh, do away with a <laughs> billion dollar industry for all of that, but at any rate, if you, you know, I'm respectful if you still want to buy a little uh, three by six, uh, six feet deep uh, plot of land where you put your final remains, that's your business. Uh, 
I can tell you right now that if you do it at some place like Comb, California, it's going to cost you some money. At any rate, what I've got here today is a little setup. I'll show a little picture here of what I'm doing. I'd already set up a, a little station to uh, process some of Daryl's cremated remains and send them to family members, um, which I've already done. So the process today involves uh, putting together envelopes. The envelopes will be labeled with his uh, the cover picture, uh, I believe. No, it's the cover picture on his uh, memorial site. If you uh, on on YouTube, if you go to the Daryl Ethely, that's D E R R A L D, new word E T H E L E Y, channel on YouTube. Uh, you'll find all of the videos that I created for Daryl's memorial and other uh, videos um, including one called uh, Daryl Does Dialysis which is something that he and I did every morning at four o'clock or so for almost three years and uh, went to dialysis three days a week but uh, before that or rather before that yeah, he, he's, his kidneys were failing, but uh, they didn't fail until he tested positive for COVID, even though he'd already been fully vaccinated. So it's been quite a process that finally ended up in Daryl's passing on May 1st, not from anything related to kidney failure, but from um, lymphoma cancer uh, that developed uh, in his uh, region down around his uh, kidneys and so forth. Pretty complicated situation that I don't think the uh, I don't think the medical profession and the facilities that we have here in Oregon um, were quite ready to uh, look and, and treat him. Uh, and finally the uh, last conversation with his oncologist was simply you've already had a liver transplant in 2013 um, you've been in dialysis now, um, and now you've got cancer. Well, we can't give you chemotherapy. We can't ke give you radiation therapy because all of those things would cause your body to reject your liver, and you die anyway. So all we can do is make you comfortable and pain-free. And at that point, as his uh, domestic partner, having <coughs> charge of his... Uh, being named on his advance directive as the person who would be making those uh, medical decisions when he wasn't able to. Um, I called Bristol uh, Hospice and the very next day this uh, nurse, a male nurse from Bristol came and uh, we started that process which really didn't take very long. So. Um, Daryl was finally moved to a acute care facility, uh, not in, 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 the, in the town where we were living, McMinnville, Oregon, and um, he actually passed away in a acute care facility that was two blocks from the mortuary. So it was all very easy, and the folks at uh, Macy and Son in McMinnville, the, the uh, funeral home there made it very easy um, and, and, we, and, and pain free for us, the family. Um, Daryl's sister, Lavette, and his brother, Terry, had both flown up here to uh, take over the process of dealing with all of the final issues from the estate sale to the house sale to, and they kind of left, left it to me to <coughs> design the content for his memorial service. So, June 15th, uh, 2024, at uh, at the Laux Auditorium at the uh, Public Library in Salem, Oregon, and you can watch all of that on Daryl's YouTube channel. So I'm going to stop here and kind of change camera angles, and and we'll just take a look at the little process that I'm working on, and we'll all see you a little bit later. Bye bye. <music> Thank you.
Thank you.